All right guys, welcome back to a new video. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to create a generative AI model trained on llama embeddings of PDF files. So um, in this section, I'm gonna talk to you guys about what we're gonna be building, how we're gonna be building it, and some of the technical terms and algorithms we're gonna be using to build this project. So first of all, what are we gonna be building? We're gonna be building a, a chatbot, kind of like ChatGPT, but for a really, a specific topic. So in this case, we're gonna be building a chatbot for AI. So we're gonna be using white papers and PDFs online relating to the subject of AI. We're gonna be passing them through this llama model, which is going to embed this data. And what embedding is, is it's just taking a corpus or raw data and it's converting it into vectors, which we can use later on in our model. So we're gonna be taking these PDFs, right? We're going to be embedding them using Llama, which, by the way, is a really popular LLM or large language model created by Facebook or Meta. And we're going to be storing these vectors, which is the embedded text, in a pinecone vector database. And um, what this is uh, going to allow us to do is going to allow us to perform RAG, which is Retrieval Augmented Generation. Now, what RAG does is I'll explain a little bit about how it works um, later on in the video, but on a high level, what it's going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to constantly keep adding more data to um, this pinecone vector database or our model, and uh, we don't have to rerun our uh, model. So in past videos, we've created models in which we give data to the model, right? We have to train it, and then we have like a model.pickle file or just a file for that model, which we can then load and um, query to it. But in this case, we don't have that because now we're storing all our vectors in our pinecone database. Uh, we don't have to retrain our model every single time we want to add new data to it. We can just add data, add data to this pinecone database and first obviously having to embed it, but then we add those vectors into our pinecone database and then we can just query to it um, as usual. And the algorithm we're going to be using to query is going to be KNN, which is K nearest neighbor, right? And um, KNN is a really simple algorithm that uh, basically allows us to perform a vector search, right? Just searching through um, these vectors. And um, I'll just explain to you guys how this works on a really high level. So um, let's say that we have a, uh, a data set of leaves and uh, the two attributes are going to be leaf height and a uh, leaf stem, right? So the stem height. And uh, let's say that we have three different types of leaves, right? And um, KNN is a little bit similar to K means learning, which is um, the method I show you guys to perform unsupervised learning. And um, basically what we need to do is we need to define a K, define a K. Right now we're just gonna set it as three. I'll explain to you guys what that means later. But um, we have a K and now we know what our three different types of leaves are. We have A, B, and C. Now A, we'll just say a circle, so we can draw some circles. We have B as a triangle. And then uh, C as a square. And um, now we have a new data point. And let's say it's a just a dot, right? And now we need to figure out uh, which category does this dot fit into. Well, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking this k, and this k is how many neighbors are we going to be looking through? So basically, if the k is three, we're going to look at the three closest, right? So we're going to first we're going to find the distance between all of them, and then we're going to look at the three closest ones, which is going to be this one, this one and let's just say this one, right? And um, we're gonna be using uh, the Euclidean uh, algorithm to perform the distance calculation. And this is just a really simple algorithm. It's just uh, y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x, sorry, it's not squared, um, x2 minus x1. 
squared, right? So it's y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared, which is the um, Euclidean algorithm. And we're going to be taking that to find the three nearest neighbors, right? So let's say it's this circle, this triangle, and this triangle. So um, you need to make sure that your k is odd, because now we need to find out which uh, group is it the most of. So we have two triangles in one circle, right? So the majority is the triangles, so we're going to classify this as um, a triangle, right? Now, if the k was, for instance, 1, we just look at the closest, the clo only the closest neighbor, right? And that would, that would actually be the circle, so then we that would be a 0. So um, that's basically how we're going to perform k and n. So that's why the k is a really big factor in how we're going to classify this, um, because as you can see, uh, the difference between three and one changed the entire classification of uh, that that dot. So, um, yeah, so that's some background about the project. Now let's actually start building it. All right, so um, first I'm explain to you guys the different files in our um, application and what they do and how they work. All this code is going to be on GitHub. So if you want to look at it, you can just ask me. But basically, the first thing that we need to do is we need to get any PDF file and we need to uh, split it into chunks and then embed it. So we're basically going to be taking the PDF file, right? We're just going to split it into uh, the chunk size that you set. Here, I think it's 500. And then we're just going to use um, Llama to embed this data. And then we're just going to be storing it into our uh, Pinecone uh, vector database. And then um, on our model, we're just going to query from this database, right, this vector, and um, we also still need to embed our data. So when we ask a question, we're going to embed that, right, and then use that KNN to get uh, the corresponding uh, output, right, for a generative AI. And uh, and then finally, we just have our UI where we, uh, where we have everything loaded. So if you want, I can run this and show you guys how this works. All right, so this is the project that I've created, and it's basically split into two different parts. So we have the ability to update to our vector database. And remember, because we're using RAG, we can actually update new files to our database, and we don't have to rerun it. We can automatically just query it from here. And basically, we can select any PDF and uh, put a chunks value. So basically, chunks is the greater the uh, chunks are, the more context the a model has right because you're giving it more data in each vector but the lower it is the more precise the data is going to be in this case we kind of want uh, more context to our data so let's set the chunks to 500 and then we can update the model and um, basically now the file has been updated right it's been embedded using llama and then updated to our vector database now we can ask it a question like what is ai and that file that i've selected um, it'll be on the GitHub, but it's a really small file, and it doesn't really have that much context about um, AI. So let's just ask it a really straightforward question. What is AI? And remember, all of these are vectors, so it's going to be trying to use KNN to generate this output, right? And um, this temperature is another variable that we have. The greater the temperature is, the more creativity you're giving to your model in this output. The lower it is, the more precise that you want to get and want to stick to the um, data that you've given it in training. So let's ask it the question, what is AI? Now, it's going to embed this data using the same llama, and um, it's just going to use KNN to get this response. So, um, we can also, after this, we can see how the temperature can change your output. But for this data, it probably won't change that much just because the file is only one page long and it really only has a couple uh, different definitions. So um, now it's responded with artificial intelligence. And uh, that's a pretty good response. Uh, keep in mind that it is, it is generating this output and we've only given it one file. So, uh, play around with this, add more files to it, and see how uh, it responds. All right, guys, so that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, please make sure to hit the thumbs up button. And if you have any questions about the tutorial, you can put it in the description down below. 
But um, this part was more of like a definitions and just explaining how the project is going to work. In the next part, I'm actually going to explain to you guys how to code the project out. So stay tuned for that. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. And until next time. Thank you.